Hey, let's talk about how the trail hand wrist extension is key to shaft lean and covering the ball. Sounds good. To get started with this, I want to talk a little bit about a study that was done on uh, tour players and their grips. Mm -hmm. What this study found is that the lead hand is very variable. You guys might have heard me say this before. Maybe. You know, you can see it with a camera. And measured evidence. Measured that. evidence. Yeah. So the, the lead hand varies from extremely strong to extremely weak, but most players lie in the middle there with right. more of a neutralish grip. However, what they found with the trail hand was interesting. And the trail hand generally lines up so that it matches the club face. It was basically 100% of the players. And how it explained a neutral right hand grip was that their right hand matches that club matches face. the club face. Exactly. So since we know that the right hand matches the club face, now this makes squaring the club face fairly simplistic, simple. If the right hand matches the face, then the right hand just has to be square at contact. That's the goal. That's the goal, right? Yep. If the right hand is open, then the ball is going to go right. If the right hand is closed, then the ball is going to go left. If assuming that face, the hand matches the face, yes. Yes. Well, we're hoping that's what we're teaching, where everybody's <laughs> going to match the right hand of the face. Now, if I want to create less loft, what w then would the right hand need to do? Extension. Extend. Mm -hmm. And we know that good players deliver less loft than what is on the golf club. For example, I'll use John Rahm because I've seen some of his numbers. When he's hitting a middle iron, he's delivering between an 11 and 13 degrees less loft than the loft that the golf club has. So that means that there is 11 to 13 degrees of retained wrist extension at contact. That's, we'll just boil it down to simplistic terms. Yeah. So that's what there is. I'm similar, maybe even a little bit more lean than what he produces. So why is that critical for us to be able to compress that golf ball well? Well, our goal is to provide, depending upon your speed, a loft that matches for you to maximize compression. Yeah. And not only will it go straighter, but you'll hit it much farther. So let, let's go down that rabbit hole just a little bit. You've all seen my swings on video, most likely, and you've seen it impact how there's a significant amount of lean in the shaft. Mm -hmm. Is that right for everyone? Should everybody have lean in the shaft like Milo lines? No, because not everyone has your speed. Yes. So obviously the less speed you produce, yeah, you can still do this. Problem is you'll never get it off the ground. Yeah, so your golf shots are gonna look like low punches that don't hold greens. If, if you're a low speed player who has lots of shaft lean. Right. So if you're a high speed player, you better be providing some shaft lean or at a significant amount if you're a high speed player. And why is that? Because if you don't, you're hitting it to the moon. Yeah, because the ball just goes straight up. Straight it up in the air. It spins up into the air and it's hard to control your distances. The wind gets your ball. And we saw that yesterday in a one student of, we had. Yeah. Yep, exactly. We want lean to varying degrees depending on our speed, but we all want some lean. We all want to have some amount of retained wrist extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. How do we get it? The way we do it is we always talk about when we get to about waist high-ish, as this right wrist starts to go into a little radial and extension, in transition, we start to turn this doorknob, keeping extension all the way down into impact from here, and then we allow it to release over here. Okay, so let me walk through this slow for everyone. I'm just gonna do it with trail hand only. So I swing this back, my wrist starts to extend. I've completed my turn. Now as I change directions, can you see, can you all see this? Subtle motion right there. Does that look right, Ed? Yep. That's about right. Okay. So there's a little bit of the doorknob turn. The shaft is shallowing out just a little bit. Now, the key here is I've got to take my whole left side and I've got to be able to take it and turn it around the corner so that my left side moves my loaded wrist all the way back to the golf ball. And that really is the key. So if, what happens if I don't do that? What happens if my left side turns off? Then you know you are going to jump and extend that wrist to get that club to that ball 100% yeah. of the time. Okay, so the things that have to be married together, if we want to have that nice trail wrist extension mm -hmm. that produces the lean in the shaft, is we've got to marry it with yep. the side getting out of the way. Getting out of the way. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover here. Now, Ed, we had to set up the camera face on for just a second so we can demonstrate this because a video is not a video. 
and, unless a golf ball gets whacked and it shows what we're trying to do. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do this fairly slowly so that the camera can catch everything. But what we're after again is changing directions with a little bit of... You can see my wrists, how they are working with my pivot. And now my lead side just goes around the corner. So let's see if that, if I can actually make that happen. Okay. That, that's pretty good. I'll bet it is. Beautiful. I think, I think that that ties it all together in a nutshell. So hopefully you guys have all liked this video. If you have, hit the subscribe, hit the bell. We want you to see all the videos that we come out with. And please join MiloLionsGolf.com where we can coach you one-on-one -on -one to swing more like an athlete.